ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಮೀ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಮೈ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಏಟ್ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಮ್ ಓಪರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿ ವಿ ಗುಂಡಪ್ಪ ದಿ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಗ್ಯಾಲರಿ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಮರೀಸ್ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ದಿ ಗೋಖ್ಲೆ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಅಫೇರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ಮೈ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒಕೇಶನ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ few people who have been instrumental in me being associated with the art gallery of memories uh, first of all uh, my paternal grandmother shrimati indira venkateshan who recently turned 96 uh, she used to speak a lot about these volumes when i was in my growing up years so although i never read it at that time i used to keep hearing about these volumes and some uh, tidbits and some nuggets from these uh, uh, books so i think it's very important that the elders of the house always endorse good people and good works of uh, literary value to the next generation so even though the children may not read it at that point of time later on this uh, word will not be something new so although i had not read a single page of nyapaka chitrashale the word nyapaka chitrashale meant a lot of affection and reverence for me so it's a very important uh, seed that was sown uh the second uh, person i like to thank is nadoja dr s r ramaswamy uh through the course of preparation of these uh, volumes in translation he has been guiding me and whenever we have a person who was directly involved with a great man or a great uh, work of literature we get so much more of energy and he is the person who was involved in the making of these volumes by taking dictation and uh, doing the index and so forth so once we have the affection and reverence we also cultivate a deeper understanding of the processes that went into the creation of uh, these works uh, thanks to srr and the third person is uh, shatadhani dr r ganesh who was the main inspiration for me to start reading these volumes so you can plant a seed you can have the soil and everything but for the uh, seed to sprout you need uh, some uh, chaitanya that is uh, our uh, dr ganesh and thanks to him i read uh, a lot of uh, works in uh, kannada uh, literature and also i like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all the translators of the multiple volumes more than 40 people have been involved in translating these works from kannada to english for a larger audience um, and with this i like to uh, um, get into the topic i one thing i had made a mistake last time and uh, it's important to uh, uh, publicly acknowledge if there is a mistake and make a correction and this i have learned from none other than uh, maha mahotpadhyay p v kane who make some mistake in a footnote in one of his volumes and in the next volume writes about it in the preface not in some footnote not somewhere so uh, a mistake made in such a small insignificant place he apologizes for it in the front so i had uh, mentioned last time about uh, karpur shrinivas rao offering dharmodaka to uh, bal gangadhar tilak i had mentioned that only the son is uh, adhikari but dharmodaka can be given by anybody else and uh, thanks to dr ganesh for pointing it out just wanted to put it on record that uh, uh, the uh, dharmodaka can be given by anybody but of course the more important thing from that episode is the kind of reverence people held for bal gangadhar tilak now giving a lecture on any of the episodes from the nyapak chitrashale is like a director who wants to make a film out of a novel there are so many enri- beautiful details in the novel which he can never bring to the screen there is lot of swagata or uh, inner dialogue or some kind of uh, a stream of consciousness which cannot be captured on screen and there are some of the things which uh, uh, will become very boring if it is on screen but it's very interesting to read so like this uh, it becomes very challenging what to pick and what to present so whatever i am saying whatever i have spoken in the past uh, in the first uh, series in september and whatever i am speaking in uh, this series it's only uh, certain glimpses that you will get of these volumes and there is no equivalent of uh, reading them in the original if you can or at least in a translation and um, in the start of the third volume which is dedicated to uh, the men of letters i had mentioned uh, last time when i was speaking about this book that dvg emphasizes the value of one individual and his sattva that can do much more than organizations so all these people are such men of sattva now not all of us are lucky enough to have association with great people in uh, our personal and our professional life 
but here we have the opportunity to connect with such great men of sattva in the at the convenience of our house now across these uh, volumes more than hundreds uh, hundred uh, uh, different personalities have uh, uh, been featured by dvg and uh, this is just a portion of the kind of experiences that dvg had he had such a wide ranging uh, contacts he has given us only a glimpse and even that if you are able to read and assimilate it is a great quality so because we may not have access that's also the reason why we read mahabharata ramayana because the kind of situations that the great characters have been placed in the past not all of us will have that situation and how these great people behave in the situation when we look at that we have a lot to learn and this is another thing that we should always remember whenever we are going through <clears throat> any uh, chapter of history we have to connect it to our lives and what we can learn from it and how we can refine ourselves because an act of reading a work like uh, nyapak chitrashala is a samskara in itself but for it to become a samskara one has to implement the teachings in one's own life otherwise it just becomes a, a reading of some work and uh, definitely as um, i have mentioned earlier also these volumes are um, educative entertaining enthralling enticing and uh, elevating uh, it, there is not a single uh, episode in these volumes that one can say is dull or not instructive if sometime it may not be so interesting in terms of uh, emotional content but it will be very informative and some of the things that can be found here cannot be found anywhere else that is the kind of uh, observations that tvg has i had covered a few uh, personalities from the third chapter and now i will uh, go on to um, a very very important person uh, to whom dvg has dedicated more than 100 pages bellave venkatnarayanappa now uh, speaking on the occasion of i think um, uh, his uh, centenary or uh, at some point in the basvangudi club he had given a short lecture and that has been transcribed and given in the first volume of the book and um, where he uh, he speaks about some of the uh, salient features of bella uh, um, uh, venkatnarayanappa there are two things that he mentions here that i would like to uh, uh, bring to your uh, uh, notice which will show you the kind of personality that he was and what he uh, faced in his life dvg says that his mind was like a fresh lump of butter in an earthen pot in a very strong earthen pot most people will see the earthen pot it is only for a few of them who have the patience to remove the lid can get the butter so uh, this kind of uh, uh, hard outside and soft inside this is uh, bellave's uh, uh, nature and in uh, another place earlier in the episode dvg says we find that the reward for nishtha consistency loyalty devotion is always nishthura bitter acrimonious angry so so many times uh, bellave tried to bring about change and build organizations and do good for the larger world but many times he was faced with lot of bitter experiences in this process and anybody for that matter who is getting into social work should have that thick skin to accept the uh, Uh, bitterness of people it's not uh, uh, it's not a easy thing it's just because you are doing something for larger good does not mean everybody has to welcome you with a red carpet there are a lot of difficulties even in that path which we learn from the life of uh, bellave now in the right at the start of this uh, long essay on bellave dvg starts off by saying if an institution has to grow if it has to sustain over a long period of time it requires dedicated volunteers it requires people who do selfless service and bellave was one such person who tirelessly selflessly worked for the kannada sahitya parishad but for his efforts over a long period of time without any expectation kasapa would not be what it is in fact even uh, an institution like the gokhale institute although it was visualized by dvg in 1915 Uh, it came into uh, uh, physical reality in 1945 and even today if it is successfully continuing it is because of dedicated uh, volunteers who have worked without expectation because if everybody has some expectation then it will be only till the time that it is fulfilled if you are working for a job the moment your salary slip 
stops, you don't get money, you may not work. Or if the external motivation is because you are doing something for your grandfather likes me to do this, so I will do all these uh, upanayana, I mean, all these sandhya vandana, all these uh, rituals because my grandfather likes it and I have respect for him. The moment grandfather uh, is gone, this also will stop. When it is motivated from inner uh, desire and uh, a selfless uh, work for the larger good, these things will sustain beyond a point of time. So, Bedlave is a person who uh, worked tirelessly and, uh, go, and uh, DVG writes that it, it is unfortunate today we cannot find uh, such good volunteers, we don't have uh, uh, dedicated workers. Even today we say the same thing. There are few people who are working very sincerely. It's very difficult to find uh, uh, volunteers. And this is uh, true whether it is uh, 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 institutions founded by uh, Gokhale himself or uh, uh, Lajpat Rai, Rabindranath Tagore, Tilak, all these institutions have kind of uh, faded. In fact, DVG's institution has survived for so long because uh, of the kind of admiration people have for him and the sustained work that has happened after his uh, death also in 1975. And uh, from his student days, Venkat Naranampa, he studied physics and he had a very uh, good eye for detail. One of the reasons uh, DVG writes is uh, maybe because his teacher of uh, Central College, John Cook, was a physicist. He was an expert in the subject and also inculcated some of these uh, values of attention to detail. And also there is an element of that in his family uh, uh, history itself. So uh, DVG recounts an episode where uh, Venkat Naranpa's brother, Venkata Pataya, was, uh, was living with few friends in Mumbai, like Mokshagunam, Krishnamurti and others. They were st studying together and living in a kind of a shared uh, facility. And um, at the end of the uh, term or something, they had to check the finances. So Venkata Pataya had made note of all the expenses to the last decimal. And finally, he had, uh, made a, had written a postcard to... Uh, uh, Moksha Gunam Krishnamurti saying, after all the money you have paid, you are still have to pay three paisa. But uh, if I ask, if I send a money order, it will cost more. So the next time you come, then you can give me that money. So that is the extent to which Venkata Pataya would maintain the accounts. So uh, this is also a, probably a family trait of uh, uh, being meticulous. And a, a meticulous person, it's, it's not like once you cultivate that, it is, uh, it is there for good. It is something that has to be constantly maintained. For example, wherever uh, Venkat Naranapa went, he used to have some chits of paper and a pencil. If he heard somebody mentioning a good uh, a book or some important author to read, he would make a note of it. And uh, DVG says, once it was written, it's like Chitragupta's writing, much to the irritation of all his friends. Because he makes a note of it, he will remember it, and it is uh, it, it will come back to haunt you if it is something wrong you have said. So this... This uh, uh, meticulousness is something that has to be constantly uh, uh, maintained. It is not something uh, like a one-time thing. Then there is an interesting story of one of the episodes when Naranapa was a teacher. He had a student called B.V. Ramayangar. And something they were talking in the class or something, he got really upset and threw uh, the cloth which was used to clean the board with all the chalk and hit his face. And he was a fair uh, uh, complexion boy, so his face became red, he started having tears in his eyes and everything. So suddenly he got, uh, Venkatanarama got scared that he's, uh, you know, injured this boy. And his father, this uh, Ramayangar's father, Venkatapati Ayangar, was a founding member of the Council of Education in Mysore and he was very well known. And uh, he was a highly respected personality by the common people. So he was living at that time in Halasuru and uh, Venkat Naranapa suddenly gets a little jittery. He goes and buys some banana and biscuit and that and this. And he goes uh, uh, to the house of Venkatapati Ayengar. So by this time, already Venkatapati Ayengar has heard about the entire episode. And uh, he looks at Naranapa and says, Oh, you have come to pacify your student. He's a rogue. You should have given him some more beatings. Now come and sit down. Let's have a chat. And uh, he, he gets him some fruit and everything. So you have bought some snacks to pacify him. Let us uh, sit here and let us have the thing, uh, snack. He has done mischief. Now, the, uh, it, it is interesting. Like I said, it's always good to look at the present day scenario and learn from it. Those days, if the teacher had uh, shouted at the student or hit the student or whatever, the parents would take the side of the teacher and say, it's the right thing you did, madam or sir. You should have given him two more uh, uh, thrashes. He's a, he doesn't study, he's a rogue. 
Now it is totally the other way around because education has become a business and the students are the clients of this business and teachers are the uh, service providers. So therefore, if the student is doing a mistake and the teacher shouts at him or her, the parents come and say, how dare you shout at my son or my daughter? So they take the side of the children and what this has, re uh, has uh, resulted in is the teachers being afraid of the students instead of the other way around. Then uh, DVG talks about uh, his first acquaintance with Bildavai Venkat Naranapa. And uh, it was uh, somewhere at the uh, end of 1912 and uh, Gundapa was in the process of starting out his own uh, uh, bi-weekly called Karnataka. And around this time, he asked, um, uh, he came in contact with Venkat Naranapa. The first thing he uh, did was to bring to DVG's uh, notice some things that were written and he says, didn't you write this? He said, yes, then why haven't you put your name? It's not a great writing, just I casually wrote it. He says, no, no, this is very nice and you should, you should have taken credit for it, it's very good. And uh, you don't have to be apologetic about it. And then he said, uh, DVG tells him that I have this idea, I want to uh, start a newspaper and uh, do Karnataka. Then the first thing that Bellave Venkatnanapa says is, you are not rich, you don't have money to burn. You, whatever little bit you have, some two pennies you have, you will lose that also. You may take some loan or something, it will all go down the drain. So people who are supporting you today, after some six months, they won't even uh, uh, look at your face. So this is what is going to happen. So please give up such thoughts. In fact, I was just talking to my friend Shashikiran before uh, this uh, uh, talk, and he mentioned even with the Prabuddha Karnataka, Bellave Venkat Naranapa had uh, uh, been uh, very discouraging because he knew the difficulties uh, that they would face. Of course, it's a different matter that uh, Krishna Shastri ran it. Um, uh, and later, of course, uh, I will come to that when I talk to uh, talk about yeah, Krishna Shastri. So he says, uh, why are you wasting your time and uh, money and um, um, you should give up this talk, these thoughts. So for a, for a short period of time, I, DVG was convinced with Venkatanadapa's argument. He said, yes, maybe it's not a good idea. But uh, DVG also was very clear what he wanted to do. Although he can suppress it for a short time, again that uh, desire uh, came up. And finally, uh, around uh, Yugadi of uh, 1913, he started uh, this, uh, uh, 1914, uh, a year uh, later, 1914-1915 Yugadi, around that time, uh, he uh, ended up uh, starting this uh, paper after a lot of thought. Then, see, what happens is when somebody comes to us for advice and we tell them, no, no, this is uh, not a good thing because you will fall into trouble and so on. And despite our uh, uh, advice, if they go do something else, then the typical nature of the person is, Nan de, on marda. Sari, akholi. let him suffer the consequences. This is the typical nature because you would have told with a good intention. The other person also might have opposed you with his intention, which is also good. And at that point of time, invariably people tend to take a back seat. I had already warned him and still he went and jumped into the water. So it is his funeral. But what Venkat Naranama did once DVG began Karnataka, he quietly came to his house one evening, gave him a packet of money and said all the best for your endeavor and he goes away. And that amount was 250 rupees in 1915, which is probably something like 15 lakhs today or maybe 10 lakhs. It's a huge amount of money. It's uh, much more than what an average person would earn in an entire year. So 250 rupees, he just casually comes, puts inside an envelope and gives it to him and he says this is a subscription for life because that newspaper also may not even last for a year. But the way of telling him was, I am not giving you a loan, I am not helping you, I am not doing some charity, but I am subscribing for it. I am be becoming a life member for your uh, uh, magazine. So this is Venkatanapa. On the one hand, he warned him that this is going, you're going to burn your money, and which is probably what happened also. Uh, ultimately, DVG had to close it down because it was not sustainable, and he was financially in a very bad shape even after the closing of Karnataka. But once they have taken a decision, however uh, hard uh, the decision is, we have to support our friends. Then, 
there was uh, a, a point of time during the first world war when the british uh, government were trying to raise some loans so they came up with something called a war loan bond and uh, then uh, <clears throat> i think that time uh, the diwan of mysore was sir m vishweshwaraya and he had appointed few people in different localities to go and try and sell these bonds so basically you you get some per, per particular rate of interest like any of the rbi bonds today so they were trying they were trying to um, sell these things and uh, uh venkatanarappa and dv gundappa all these people these people had agreed to um, market this uh, war loan bond in this area basvangudi south bangalore and uh, dvg was not serious at all he said who is going to look at our faces and buy these bonds so let us uh, whoever is interested they will buy it, don't worry and uh, naranappa was uh, furious he said if you, this is what you think then why did you agree to be a part of the committee if you didn't we are not interested don't be a part of the committee but once you have agreed to be a part of the committee you should put your best effort and finally they go to different people and they uh, land up uh, in the house of one kl datta who was a, i think he was a senior uh, uh, some uh, senior guy he was working in the finance ministry he was quite uh, wealthy then finally this datta told uh, venkatanappa why are you taking so much of trouble whether you raise the money through this war uh, loan bond or not the british are going to fight the war they will continue their thing whatever they are uh, doing instead of uh, wasting this kind of time and effort in this why don't you spend uh, your efforts for the developing the state which you are vishweshwaraya is working so hard for it so finally he saw merit in the other argument and he uh, quietly left and uh, handed over this uh, Uh, thing back and he didn't have any bitterness about it he said good i realized now what you say is correct naranappa was a teacher of physics uh, venkat naranappa and uh, before every class he would at least make a mental uh, note of what should be taught uh, or he would have a small piece of paper where he would write uh, some of these things and uh, the meticulousness with which he would prepare every uh, lecture would uh, would often cause surprise to dvg and others so once what happened was they were uh, dvg was walking in this uh, narhari rao um, gudda which is that mount joy which is very close by and uh, they saw um, uh, venkat naranappa was sitting on a gunny bag and with a pen and paper and working out some problem and uh, dvg obviously you know he's uh, he always like to make a joke he's what what are you doing you are yeah he was uh, on the verge of his retirement uh, and he was a senior professor said, what are you doing here sir? and uh, before the class no i am uh, working out a problem this need to be taught in today's class he says uh, you need to work out a problem sir you are a scholar of mathematics and physics you can just do it on the fly then naranappa says our scholarship can only take us as far as passing the examinations i have students who are very intelligent in my class and in front of them i cannot fail i cannot look like a fool i have to prepare i have to anticipate their questions i have to be ready for my class if i don't prepare for one day for one lesson and go there without preparation they are smart enough to find out and i cannot lose my face and this is not because of anything because he is all on the verge of retirement this is simply because it was a matter of principle for him he did not want to be disloyal towards his job and in the same context dvg brings uh, the story of one venkatramayya who was a very well known lecturer and he was from a very poor family and uh, the entire family was waiting for him to start work so that this the monthly salary will be used for running of the household and uh, he goes uh, so he joins the job and the first salary whatever he uh, gets straight away he goes to the bookshop and he buys a dictionary and this is some shakespeare dictionary his father is uh, very disappointed he said the whole idea of educating you sending you to uh, study and getting you job everything is so that you can start earning and uh, start feeding the family you have got went gone and bought some book then he says no no i am teaching some of the uh, shakespeare plays like merchant of venice to understand it thoroughly i need this dictionary it is a requirement for my uh, job if i don't do my job well I, how can i take that salary and with uh, uh, with what kind of uh, what will my conscience say so one month you have waited all these years you can wait one more month next month onwards i'll give you but now i need this 
so that is the kind of dedication some of the teachers had and of course even today there are teachers like that who are so dedicated now uh, uh, there are so many things about venkat narayan appa we, we can spend a whole day uh, just uh, discussing about him um, he was a very uh, conservative person in terms of his practices orthodox in the traditional practices like swayampaka he would cook for himself he would not eat outside and he was very uh, following all the rules and regulations of the traditional um, um, you know uh, vedic uh, lifestyle so one day what happened was that there was some uh, meeting in the chamarajara chamarajendra sanskrit college and somebody comes and uh, tells something to venkatnarayanappa and he gets very agitated and immediately he calls dvg who was also there did you hear about this kind of uh, uh, terrible thing have you heard about this foolishness this madness so then dvg is like uh, what what happened he, he thought something is serious he said there is some yaga going on and some uh, some uh, in uh, this uh, ganapati devasthana and some abc shastri he has gone to answer nature's call and without doing achamana without washing his hands nothing he has just rejoined the yaga can you imagine what kind of nonsense this is and uh, what kind of injustice and how can how can we you know be quiet when we listen to this then dvg just uh, kind of tries to suppress a laugh because he finds it very amusing and uh, then venkat narayan appa is even more angry you are laughing is this your adherence to dharma so then dvg says sir what can okay maybe it happened what can we do about it you say what we can do we must punish him we must ensure that this person doesn't remain in brahmana mandala uh, brahmana mandali and then finally he says okay who told you this how do you know about this some a b c d some other d e f shastri told this uh, story okay let us assume that this is true now how can we be very sure about these things and wh- what is the uh, we have got some second hand third hand information and then dvg you can see here the kind of wisdom that dvg shows in such matters he is not opposed to shastras he is not opposed to traditional practices but he has such a such viveka he says how can we say that he actually went and cause the defilement of yaga shouldn't we ask him first what really happened give him the benefit of the doubt without even knowing anything would you pass a judgment punish him uh, by uh, you know just listening to somebody's words maybe he has uh, that person has uh, ha- he may have just gone outside and come back and if we dig into the matter the brahmana might have something to say about the person who complained to you he may say this df shastri actually we you know what he did 20 years back he did this this kind of things are possible and this conversation will lead to a chain of accusations and will lead us to unforeseen places and people we don't know who will accuse whom of what and it will become all the more difficult to find out the truth this will only lead to jealousy and strained relationship and uh, this is see the wisdom of tvg and finally they are venkatnarayanappa uh, uh, is not uh, convinced he says but uh, should we keep quiet should we not do anything about it and as they were speaking motagana halli subramanya shastri who both of them highly revere he came he said what is happening and uh, finally they explained the whole thing and he said this brainless dispute between these vaidika brahmanas have no beginning and no end it is like uh, you know putting your hand into a ant hill with full of ants so don't go it go there just let it be so we can see that although dvg is adhering to traditions and all this he is very practical and later on we see it when he talks about venkannaya venkannaya also has that kind of uh, golden mean and uh, uh, wherever they used to travel sometime venkatnarayanappa would uh, cook food for everybody because he would have to cook for himself he would also cook for everybody else and uh, uh, the uh, younger people like dvg and venkatnaya will be ch- uh, chit chatting but vellave uh, venkatnarayanappa and kadaba uh, nanjundu shastri all these people will go collect the water cook the food make it ready for everybody and he would have such affection for the others he himself never used to drink coffee but he would make coffee for everybody he in fact had a coffee plant in his house also because in case somebody want coffee he can use the coffee seeds and when they used to travel in the morning he will say 
Did you sleep well? Shall I make some coffee? Would you like to have bed coffee? Or would you want to go and, uh, you know, finish your ablutions and come back? And he will uh, prepare coffee for everybody, put it in some uh, flasks and cover it with a cloth and take it with him. So even though somebody may be very traditional and orthodox, it never stopped him from being friendly with the rest of the world. We may have our own practices. Now, sometimes uh, individuals have certain strict uh, rules and regulations they have laid for themselves. Some people have to wake up in the morning and go for a walk. One never walk, kelsa. They may have that kind of a mindset. Some people may have to go intermittently and uh, smoke a cigarette. Some people may have to necessarily evening they have to do some Ramayana Parana. Like this, whatever, good or bad habit. Habits everybody uh, will have and some people may have, be very particular about these habits. But that should not come in the way of our friendships, our family life, because the, these, uh, there is no beginning or end to these, uh, these habits. Because if you want to find a person who has exactly the same habit like you, you have to keep uh, hunting uh, uh, all over the place. And just because somebody has the same habit as you doesn't mean they will be having similar uh, other qualities as you. You may find another person to walk with you, but if they are very dull and uh, uninteresting, walking with them, it is better to walk alone. So, uh, these habits and personal quirks should not come in the way of our social life. Which is probably why DVG also said, Yeradu Konea Madu Manasinali. So that you have one for the outside world, one for your own world. Whether it is inner contemplation or your own personal quirks, you have that as a separate thing and your external uh, um, interactions are different. Now, uh, uh, Bellave was also... Uh, very much for self-reliance. He used to advocate agriculture as a way of life, especially for the uh, Brahmana community. And he also would, uh, he has, he, there is a section in this called the Association of Volunteers, which is very interesting. Even today, there is uh, some things to learn here. Now, he has talked about the Brahmana community, but any community that is, uh, uh, you know, the uh, victim of uh, injustice in society, can definitely uh, fi uh, will find these points uh, useful. So he says they had to ta take up to agriculture in large numbers because they have to be self-reliant, they have to grow their own food. Only then they will have some uh, uh, free time and uh, uh, study the Vedas and Shastras. And also he says they have to be self-dependent for their studies. So they have to establish a self-help club for the purpose. And uh, there will be some essential activities like cooking and cleaning. All of them have to share the responsibility and uh, jointly do. So every uh, by, by turn, different people will cook for everybody else. Somebody will clean uh, uh, turn by turn. So basically, community living and trying to help each other and uh, have a self-help uh, group. And not only that he suggested this, he also started a self-help club. And uh, he, he gave his own place, his own property was provided free of cost for this uh, self-help group. And the student house, it worked for a few months, it worked very well. After that, it disintegrated because people were not interested to uh, clean, people were not interested to uh, cook for others, they were taking care of their own thing. And they're like, I have to study who is going to go and wash the vessels and so on. And even recently, I heard this complaint from some uh, person who has been running a, a school, a, a hostel for uh, people from uh, uh, economically backward uh, community uh, groups. And he said, the problem is people don't want to follow the rules and regulation of the place. Even though we are giving free food and free stay, they would rather take a loan and go and stay in some place on their own because they don't have to follow the discipline. But the uh, prescription that Bellave gives is very good because any community when they don't get the benefit of the government scheme or they are uh, victimized in other ways, it is very important for them to unite and help each other in different ways. Then um, another uh, um, uh, interesting segment here is the uh, DVG talks about all the things that Bellave used to carry when they used to travel, the things carried on a trip. So he went on a nationwide tour and uh, he went all alone. So he had a large vessel, a stove, a cane suitcase, a trunk and a rolled up bed. This is all the, uh, because he has to cook his own food and he has to uh, uh, sleep on his own bed. 
he will not go and uh, live in some hotel or some uh, eat outside so like this he had he would carry all this thing collect water in the thing heat it have a bath again fill it up with water use it for cooking and then he will close the vessel when it is cooking he will perform all his ahanikas and then by the time this would be ready so like this wherever he went he would be able to follow the uh, practices and we have to be forever grateful uh, to bellave for the mallikarjuna swami temple which is very uh, close by what you have uh, which is walkable from here he was the person responsible for actually building that practically building that temple he found a shivalinga there and he got the necessary permissions and he built brick by brick himself along with people and he also wanted the government to support this and there were people who said why do you want the government to get involved we will get some uh, uh, philanthropists they will give the whatever money you want he said no the government has to recognize this temple it is very important and then it was divan madhav rao's time when this happened and later the temple uh, it was built for further and every uh, shivaratri he would apply slaked lime himself he would ensure that there are no, the temple is uh, maintained and uh, he also started uh, science monthly called vigyana he wanted to propagate science he organized lectures in fact he had uh, some of the important people uh, to come and give lectures he had a vigyana prachara samiti of course in the first day of the thing there is the hall will be full the second day there will be some 70% by the time the last day of the lecture series he'll have 10% of the people but he never uh, uh, bothered about it he continued uh doing this sincerely for a long time he worked on the english kannada dictionary and um, he had uh, he was a, di- a very hard taskmaster he would ensure everything is uh, in uh, in place and there was no uh, opportunity for people wasting time on eating and other kind of things and uh, he worked without any expectation from the parishad in fact one of the neighbors of his were like you leave every day in the morning you go to parishad what do you get from this and he said no this organization belongs to the nation it doesn't have any money you know people who work should do out of patriotism and all that he says how can you say that does anybody work free look at me and he points at his uh, handbag he has some bag in his i go to the market i bring back vegetables for two or three days because i belong to the municipal council i am a bench magistrate and so on and uh, that gives me money if you can't get even this much of vegetables what kind of parishat is this and uh, then this uh, venkatanarapa didn't say anything because he said this fellow is not going to understand what i am doing and several times we find people like uh, venkatanarapa who are sticklers who are very value based but because they are so particular about some things the people around them find it little hard and they get uh, uh, troubled so but these are the Uh, you know conscience keepers amidst us but for people like bella venkat narayana pa but for krishna shastri but for people like this many of the things in society would not have have happened now i told you that uh, venkat narayana pa was a very traditional person and who followed all the madi mailge everything he was the one responsible for setting up the basavan gudi union and service club so he never uh, drank or obviously he never uh, even playing cards hardly uh, maybe he would have held the cards in his hand once a month or once in two months or something but he wanted a place that will get lot of people in this neighborhood to spend their evenings meaningfully and in uh, uh, some uh, manner connecting with the uh, uh, friends so his uh, vision was that society should do well that wherever we are living we have to be of some use to this place there is no use just occupying okay i am a resident of basmangudi i am a resident of rajanagar i am a resident that's not enough what can i do to this place can i b- bring about some change can is there some way for me to help these people so this was the kind of uh, mentality that um, um, he had and uh, in the um, and there is a, a, a almost a, a, he had grown old and he had a uh, lot of uh, uh, difficulties and uh, dvg had gone to meet him and uh, he was uh, you know in lying down in a room just next to the main street and dvg said why do you lie down in this room which is just in you know i just sent to the street lot of dust and smoke and this kind of noise and this thing why don't you go to the other part of your house which is more quieter and uh, venkatanarana said okay let me think about it 
the second time when DVG again says, why are you spending your time in this kind of thing? Then he says, your advice is well-founded, but I prefer to remain here because elsewhere I don't get the pleasure of two elements that this room possesses. One is that my grandchildren are in the next room and listening to their talk and their games and everything, they bring some um, uh, life to me. And secondly, my granddaughter teaches music and uh, I think plays the violin in the other room. And that I love listening to her music, he says. Now, DVG had nothing to say when he mentioned these things. So the, you can uh, make out uh, from a person like Venkatnaranappa, there are so many elements that it is hard to believe that such a person was there. Uh, a, a very, very paradoxical mix of a strict disciplinarian, but filled with a lot of warmth and affection. Uh, almost like Vajradapi uh, Kathorani, Rodoni Kusumamri, what uh, Bhavabhuti says in his Uttarama Charita, is almost uh, like written for a person like uh, Venkatnaranappa. Then um, in the next, uh, he talks about uh, the uh, Guru Bhakti that uh, Mirza Ismail had. And uh, thanks to the dedication that Mirza had towards Venkat Naranapa, one of the results was that the Kannada Sahitya Parishad got a full-fledged auditorium, like a hall. Because when he had visited uh, the uh, Kannada Sahitya Parishad, Mirza Ismail asked his uh, teacher, so where is your lecture hall? And uh, there was a small room and, Venk uh, and Venkat Naranapa said, well, this is our lecture hall. He says, this is a room. I want to see the Sabha Mantapa. He says, sir, there is no uh, sub. This is only our Sabha Mantapa. This is everything. Then he said, this is where you conduct meetings. How can this uh, 20, 30 people, I mean, even 20 people cannot fit this room. So this is not a lecture hall. We will conduct one. And uh, he uh, talks to some Tandoni Rao. He said, please prepare everything. And I want you to create this uh, hall. And uh, we, sure enough, within a few days, everything was sanctioned. And uh, that is how the present Parishad Hall was constructed. I, I think even now, the same uh, we, we still exists. Then uh, DVG talks about uh, Panjay Mangesh Rao. Now, uh, there are a lot of literators from that uh, uh, Mangalore, Udupi region whom DVG did not have regular contact. Once in a way, he would meet them. But even then, there was a lot of warmth and affection. Even a person like Panjay Mangesh Rao, he has hardly met three or four times. And he uh, mainly uh, dedicates this episode to talking about his first meeting with Panjay Mangesh Rao. And he went there and uh, uh, he, uh, Panjay Mangesh Rao went uh, 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 taking DVG to meet different people, Muliyati Mappaya and uh, uh, some Ullal Mangesh Rao and other people. And uh, there is one small paragraph that DVG writes that is so uh, touching that after all this thing, they went to St. Aloysius College and uh, they had some uh, went very nice time and he learnt about Mangalore and everything. And he got back from Mangalore after meeting Panjay Mangesh Rao for the very first time in his life. He, he writes, When I sought permission from Panjay Mangesh Rao to return home, I felt an indescribable emotion of suffering in my heart, a feeling of leaving an elder brother who nurtured me for many years. So imagine after a single meeting, if you have to cultivate this kind of emotional bond with a person, what should be the heart of DVG and the personality of Panjay Mangesh Rao? Nothing more need be said. In one of the episodes, he writes about the Dharwad Karnataka's zest for uh, literature and some of the important uh, people of that, uh, of that uh, region who have contributed to Karnataka history. Um, there are many, uh, many names that uh, he talks about and their, uh, their work. But uh, Kaujaligi Srinivasa Rao is a very interesting uh, episode. Uh, he was known as the Lion of Karnataka, Tiger of Karnataka, because he was uh, brave as a lion and he would roar like a tiger and so on. Now, here, what happens on one occasion, uh, in before the Raichur conference of the Kannada Sahitya Parishad, there was a proposal about uh, uh, the uh, improvement of the uh, Pampa region of Hampi. So, building repairs and facilities necessary for travelers, all these details was mentioned in the proposal. DVG gave it to Srinivas Rao. And uh, Srinivas Rao said, uh, so whose proposal is this? 
But he said, it's my proposal. The first question Srinivas Rao asked him is, have you been to Hampi? And DVG said, I have not been to Hampi. He says, in that case, you better visit Hampi first and then write your proposal because with a mere glance of your proposal, it becomes evident you have no idea about the subject because even if our state were to give its entire budget, it cannot do even one-tenth of whatever you have suggested here. It is absolutely unreasonable. And uh, then DVG obviously is uh, discouraged and uh, feeling very sad. And finally, when he actually visited Hampi, he realized what this man had said was so true. And also that most of the other people, when you give a proposal, they would say, oh, very good, so nice, thank you. But here was a person who honestly and critically evaluated by a mere glance that this is a ludicrous thing. So only a person who had that sort of competence and knowledge in the field could give this kind of feedback. Then uh, there is a short episode of uh, fiasco during the Kannada Sahitya Samirana in uh, Davangere. Then he comes to another important uh, personality of this book, which is B.M. Shri Kantaya. We know from these, uh, this episode that uh, B.M. Shri was a very, very close friend of uh, uh, D.V. Gundappa. And um, uh, D.V.G. talks about the Sahitya Shraddha of uh, B.M. Shri, the devotion to literature. Now, this is a quality that uh, B.M. Srikantaya had throughout his life. Even when he was a student, when he had completed the B.A. and he was preparing for the M.A. exams, uh, there was a plague in Sri Rangapatna. And he was uh, very uh, fond of uh, William Wordsworth, the poet. And there are two long poems of Wordsworth. One is Prelude and the other is Excursion. So he wanted to read this uh, uh, thoroughly. So every morning, uh, he would set out to go to the French rocks, which is uh, near Pandapura, and read f uh, until lunchtime. Now, n these poems are not prescribed by any university. It was not required for his uh, MA exam. It was not part of his, uh, any of his studies. But he wanted to study it. He was interested. He took the effort. He would go there because if he was at home, it would not conduce. They will ask him to do something or the other. It's difficult. So he would go every morning to French Rock, sit there. And within a month, he learned the whole thing uh, almost uh, from memory. This is uh, the kind of dedication. Many years later, when Srikanteya was almost on the verge of uh, probably his, it was uh, you know, past 50 years and he's already very well known. BM Shri also gained a lot of fame during his lifetime. Not only a famous guy and uh, very well known. And uh, he had visited Bangalore and uh, he was uh, in, living in some place and DVG went and knocked. There was no response. He thought there was somebody singing something, almost like a humming or singing. Then again he knocked and finally he took his uh, rod and hit it, uh, you know, banged the door and a walking stick and he says the BMC was used to these kind of mischiefs of mine. And then finally it turns out that BM Sri was reading Dante's Divine Comedy and learning it by memory. So he had kept the book open, he would read a couple of lines, he would walk reciting it again and again and again till it gets uh, registered, again he would read and continue doing this. So at 50 years of age, and uh, DVG writes, his pension days were nearing. At that point of time, this man is trying to commit to memory uh, some great work. So it, this is the, the kind of at, uh, uh, attraction that, DV, that uh, B.M. Srikantai had for uh, uh, literature. And of course, he narrates uh, some of the uh, interesting episodes from uh, his childhood. One of it uh, is uh, kind of cute, which is about a person called Punda Mama. And they have a small group of boys uh, who are growing up together. And this Punda Mama is a little older. Uh, he's kind of a dada. He comes and joins the group. And these people are taken. He is our leader. He is our god. We should worship him. So we will, we will get all the, uh, you know, uh, puja samagri. And so what they do, they dig a small uh, hole and uh, like a pit and make him sit there and cover it uh, almost till uh, the, only the head can be seen because they want to worship him. He's, he becomes the vigraha. So these boys have put him there and it's in front of a, a, high, a court, a court premises. And these people have gone to buy all the agarbatti and flowers and all the puja samagri. And this guy is uh, he's, uh, short of breath. He can't breathe because his, his full body is in the thing and uh, totally pressed. He's almost uh, you know, losing consciousness. By the time the 
court starts the people the lawyers and everybody uh, start uh, they see this and they are shocked they see what is this it's a head is it uh, just uh, it's, uh, it's alive and thing and for, then this boy is uh, stuck there for and for some reason and they dig it and then some doctor is there thankfully they, he is uh, given uh, um, artificial uh, um, respiration and everything he is fine but by the time these boys come they are uh, worried because they think he was lying down and they think something has happened to their god and they get uh, agitated and so this is kind of a uh, uh, story that uh, bm shri uh, narrates to dvg that uh, happened in his life so he says uh, the 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 the, the the uh, the people uh, uh, they were trying to uh, worship this guy and the doctor's efficiency saved the day and the boys were happy at the end of the day because they could eat all the fruits that they uh, brought from the uh, market then there is a uh, lot of uh, disagreements that uh, dvg has with uh, bm shrikantaya although they were very close in fact many times they have traveled together they are typically roommates whenever they travel they used to uh, st uh, stay together the discussions will go on till late in the night and uh, they would still be lot of disagreements and uh, they would discuss a variety of topics and uh, also uh, uh, th there was a certain kind of uh, Uh, uh liberalism or modernism in uh, bm shrikantaya whereas uh, uh, dvg was a little more traditional and uh, uh, conservative in his approach so uh, bm shri would say how do you know that uh, homer has uh, uh, how do you know that valmiki has not taken from homer that ramayana is not inspired by iliad and uh, dvg would say how do you know that homer was not inspired by ramayana and uh, why should uh, Uh, ajax be converted to ashwatthama why can't he remain ajax and why should prometheus be called matarishwa why can't he be called ushar budha and all these kind of things and they used to discuss a lot about word forms so what is the right usage of the word and here um, uh, dvg gives a very nice uh, almost like an analysis of how you choose certain words whether to use kadame or kadime these for lot of people these things may be very insignificant but the fact that some people are taking it seriously and trying to educate the people on the right usage is, is very important and he says english words can be used fearlessly in the same way urdu and other such words are used in the kannada language jargons that came from english can be used as it is there is no need to find another word for coal or electricity helicopter and london will be london you don't have a translation for london so similarly we won't have any uh, uh, objection if synonyms can be prepared in kannada or uh, 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 sanskrit whenever it is possible the important feature is the meaning should be conveyed so if i if i were to create some sanskrit word for uh, tube light and use it Uh, it will only cause confusion whereas if i say tube light everybody will understand it similarly if i if i say some majge huli if i uh, create some technical term in english for that nobody will understand but majge huli everybody understands who is from karnataka so sometimes you have to retain words as they are then dvg says we should try to increase our wealth of words our vocabulary as much as possible we should uh, keep Uh, absorbing newer and newer words if we go on rejecting words on the basis that they are impure or they are from a foreign language or that they are rustic and so on then we will only be uh, having poverty in our language we need to adopt a generous view even with respect to language so this is uh, uh, dvg's view and very nicely has given uh, the um, his analysis and they used to have debates about uh, bm shrikanta had some ideas on changing the script to make it in a different way dv said this has been coming this has come down to us for so many years why unnecessarily change something which is working let, let us not have any problems in accepting newer ideas but there is no need to unnecessarily uproot a tree you don't have to some reinvent the wheel so there is some funny way of writing the bm shri instead of vattakshara you split it and put it next to that it's like something like tamil he was influenced a lot by tamil in fact he said all the students of kannada should study tamil uh, and also there was a big uh, discussion between bm shrikantaya and dvg with regard to traditional scholarship 
So BM Sri was the of, of the opinion that why should you have a separate group of people called traditional scholars? Let them study traditional things also and modern and everything. Let them study all these different things. But DVG knew that there is a great value of traditional learning and that traditional scholarship can never be attained in our universities. He says, the roots of our language lie in our ancient literature. Its construction and sophistication are drawn from traditional grammar. And those who are not thorough in classical literature and Vyakarana cannot teach Kannada or Sanskrit in a satisfactory manner. The scholarship of MA and PhD students, graduates, cannot be considered to be on par with traditional scholars. And all MAs and PhDs are not Tinam Srikantayas and DL Natsimachars, he says. People like Hiriyanna also have mentioned the importance of traditional scholarship. So, the mastery of a BA graduate in Kannada or English or Sanskrit is one type of mastery, but it cannot be the same as somebody who goes to a Patshala and studies from the fundamentals. There were some rumours that BM Sri was a Sanskrit hater. And DVG says that Rumours were afloat for some time that B.M. Srikantya didn't take pride in Sanskrit and in fact harboured hatred towards it. I cannot say that these rumours were entirely baseless. It's a very subtle, he says. And then he goes on to say that Srikantya did not have actually hatred, but there are some reasons for people to think like this. That he would, he would uh, have uh, some... Uh, preference for modernity, he, he would rather use something which is more Kannada than Sanskrit. But to counter this point, DVG tells a, a short anecdote when he was talking about the subject of literature and science in the Karnataka Sangha at Central College. Um, he had quoted a few lines from uh, the poem of Shelley, Prometheus Unbound, and on the fly he had given a translation of the uh, verse. And in that translation, uh, he had used a lot of Sanskrit words. Whereas when Krishna Shastri asked him to make a transcript of his speech and uh, give, it to, uh, give it to him, DVG used a lot of Kannada words and uh, gave it. And uh, uh, Krishna Shastri uh, said, uh, this is not uh, right. Uh, uh, DVG said, uh, um, uh, DVG had uh, put uh, Kannada words and Krishna Shastri had corrected it and said, uh, uh, the original version was better, more Sanskrit words were there, why are you doing this uh, kind of... Uh, and they had a debate and discussion. And uh, so they went to uh, BM Sri for uh, Faisal, so to give an uh, opinion. And uh, BM Sri uh, heard all the arguments and he went inside for some time to think about it. And finally he said, no, Krishna Shastri is correct. Because a work like Prometheus Unbound is so rich in its language, it's brilliant uh, uh, English of Shelley, if it is not brought out in our uh, if it has to be brought out in our language, we need that richness and ojas of Sanskrit. It cannot be done with uh, just these uh, Kannada words. So a person like um, uh, Srikantaya, who was supposedly anti-Sanskrit, in when it is more pertinent, he was for um, um, Sanskrit. And also, uh, uh, B. M. Sri was a very good uh, orator and um, uh, would um, attract uh, his listeners. Again, we see there's so much of difference in the uh, opinions with specific topics between BM Sri and uh, DVG, but that never came in the way of their friendship. Uh, he has great regard for BM Sri, and um, that the fact that he's written so much about uh, these uh, scholars in such uh, uh, endearing terms makes it amply clear. Then we go to T.S. Venkannaya, a remarkable person, two of the uh, great uh, literary works of Kannada, uh, Dr. Ganesh was pointing it out to me, that uh, uh, the Mankuti Manakagga and the Ramayana Darshanam, Mankuti Manakagga of D.V. Gundappa. Incidentally, this is the 80th year of its publication. Uh, it came out in 1943. Uh, so the Kagga and uh, Ramayana Darshanam, both extraordinarily famous works, were dedicated to the same person, T.S. Venkannaya. He was a man of... Uh, uh, great inner vision who had uh, um, uh, what uh, DVG writes a feel for literature. He and uh, 
ಎ ಆರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಅವರ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿ ಅಶ್ವಿನಿ ದೇವತಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ದೇವರ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಟೋಟ್ಲಿ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ದೆ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಕನ್ನಡ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಪರಿಷತ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ರಭು ದ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಆನ್ ನಾವು ವೆಂಕಣ್ಣಯ್ಯ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ವಿಲ್ ಗಿವ್ ಐಡಿಯಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ವಾಸ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಕ್ಯೂಟ್ ದಿ ಐಡಿಯಾಸ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಅ ವೇ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಟೀಮ್ ವರ್ಕ್ so whenever some uh, some work was going on he would say oh this is uh, f- fantastic if you you know you grate some raw mango and put it here it will become even better oh this sambode is very nice you put little bit of a shunti in the center it will become very very tasty and he will give all these ideas you should do pitto like this you should do something and uh, uh, krishna shastri will be almost going behind him and ensuring that these things are done and uh, whenever uh, venkanaya's wife would go to her parents house typically venkanaya would uh, be with dvg and he says almost he was a member of our family and uh, dvg's father who was a foodie used to really enjoy venkanaya's company because he will demand that we will you should uh, he will tell dvg's mother you should make this today uh, and he will prepare all the detailed menu for the uh, uh, for the dinner and uh, dvg's mother was so fond of him he would she would uh, indulge all his whims and uh, for uh, dvg and his father who are foodies uh, it is a treat because if they ask it, it may not have uh, work but uh, guest in the house is uh, demanding all these things so uh, it was getting done and um, when uh, talking about uh, so when uh, dvg writes about uh, venkanaya he says matters personal speech informal this is my state when i have to speak about venkanaya where to begin where to end what is the right order what to present what not to present i lose a sense of discretion we were two people whose hearts and minds were one for such a long period of time in life many friendships are like the shirt and coat merely external objects sticking to our body it is only one or two friendships that become one skin and one's flesh and bones thereby becoming the very refuge of one's life venkanaya was one such person he was the inner essence of my life not an extraneous object this uh, passage is uh, beautiful in kannada uh, much more than english so almost you can see the kind of connection that uh, they had and uh, they would uh, spend uh, so much of time together he writes sometimes a uh, whole day would be spent just walking from one place to the other discussing a um, number of topics or they would uh, some of the friends would make venkanaya sing do kavya vachana for uh, pampa bharata or uh, kumara vyasa bharata and uh, his insight into literature was uh, something which is very uncanny um, you know and uh, dvg says a feel suggest that one experiences by touch he had the acumen to fully grasp the subtleties and essence of whatever he touched like in a dark room a person who is familiar with the room can easily find his way by just touching like this this feel for literature that uh, that instinctive element of it which is it is kind of transcends scholarship that venkanaya had in fact even professor ns subra who was a principal of the uh, mysore college he said venkanaya is a man with a feel for literature a very rare type of person and uh, he, when uh, venkanaya was living in mysore his life was somewhat comfortable he was he grew up in abject poverty and slowly rose up to earn some uh, money and wherever he was uh, used to stay he expected to be in a spacious place he needed a soft blanket and a nice jamkhana and uh, there was a, a soft pillow and then around him some of his students would used to sit whether it's tinam shrikantayya or dl narsimachar and other students they would have a sloping uh, desk sitting on the floor and writing and they were uh, all of the three or four of them were sitting together and they were working uh, in the editing of uh, hariharas uh, Uh, ragale or some other work they are studying the palm uh, manuscripts of and making some notes and identifying the pathantaras and uh, at uh, regular intervals there will be dosa and puri and coffee all these things will come and uh, dvg says this is an episode that presents a glimpse into the life of an honest literary scholar and throws light on his personality often times i recall this episode the joy that i derive from that memory is a great gift to this poor soul so some of the simple joys of life again and again i think one of the um, uh, late motifs of the eight volumes of uh, nyapak chitra shale is that we don't need to have lot of things to enjoy if you have few friends 
you have few delicacies maybe a, even a simple coffee and a, some uh, sweet and maybe some ambode or uppittu whatever some sweet some food item that you like and reading some work of literature and spending time we don't have to spend a lot of money and go to a mall or uh, you know go on some foreign holiday just going to some doddaganapati devasthana and sitting below a tree and reading a few lines of kumaravyasa bharata can do wonders and can give the same amount of enjoyment or even more enjoyment than doing all this uh, circus and uh, especially when you have somebody like venkannaya who used to do uh, such wonderful kavya vachana and one of the constant uh, complaints of both the dv gundappa and ar krishna shastri was that your kavya vachana is so good that even some ordinary poem you are able to elevate it to such a great standard it, that it sounds like a fantastic work it may be something very ordinary but your vachana is so good and sometimes if you are distracted your mind is not uh, in uh, the verse even a great verse may you make it sound very uh, ordinary so the vachana makes all the difference so then they have a once the after a such a vachana session there is a big uh, argument between krishna shastri and um, venkannaya and uh, they are uh, they are deep in their discussion and then around them slowly there is a gathering of some uh, people some people are listening to this uh, this discussion and finally uh, they say ay to bro early let's go and get something to eat uh, they, one of them would have said and suddenly the people are like sir why did you stop please continue discussing it is so enriching for us your discussions are so valuable and then uh, dvg says only then did we realize the sort of literary hunger for good kannada that was present among the people venkannaya spoken language is endowed with such illumination and sweet- sweetness we exchange a few pleasantries with the people assembled uh, there and then they finish the discussion and they go on so sometimes when even two great people are fighting there is much to listen and enjoy and learn from them and uh, i'm sure many of our friends have gained lot from ganesh sir's uh, uh, arguments with uh, some of the people so even in the state of anger in the state of discussion debate there are so many things uh, 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 some people can learn and there is a nice section uh, which dvg writes when talking about venkannaya called my defeat venkannaya has defeated me in several areas i have lost to him in several matters such as scholarship awareness wisdom self restraint purity and exalted emotions one of the occasions in which i was defeated by him is a matter pertaining to public life and therefore i find it appropriate to narrate here so look at uh, dvg's personality when uh, he writes something like this so basically there was a working committee of the parishad and dvg comes up with all these rules and regulation we should start at this time this time to this we will work like this he became the vice president he had all these ideas he said i'm going to implement all these rules and regulations we will start exactly at 4 o'clock and then uh, you know the what is the rules for the annual literary conferences and everything he presented in front of the working committee so the moment uh, venkannaya takes this and he says tathastu and before even uh, dvg can respond he says anyatha bhavati so good let it be so but it's going it's not going to be so it will be different and um, dvg is like why do you say this he says none of this will work because this is the nature of people they will not allow all these things to be uh, uh, implemented like uh, lincoln also said you can uh, uh, repeal some laws you cannot repeal human nature <laughs> so like that there is something called human nature which will always be there you say people uh, should meet at 8:30 for breakfast and 9 o'clock we'll start the meeting people will come at 8:45 people will come at 9:15 if you say coffee is at 4 o'clock some people will come at 3:30 and finish all the coffee so somebody who comes promptly at 4 o'clock they will not have any coffee there will be people who come at 4:15 and demand coffee in a loud voice so all these thing people will not uh, follow these rules and regulations so you can try as much as you want it will not be successful and finally dvg realized that this is what it is at the end of the day it is not possible to control a large group of people the kind of balance between the internal and external was extraordinary in the life of venkannaya as uh, 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 dvg uh, writes he says the ephemeral nature of worldly life and the glory of higher self both of these were deep rooted feelings in venkannaya's consciousness this would always be uh, 
you know, uh, you know, seen in the conversations, in the behavior of Venkatnaya. He had happiness and contentment in life, but he was enthusiastic. He was uh, very energetic, and that joy and enthusiasm that he had were always within limits. He always remembered that life's imper impermanence, the ephemeral nature of life, and that reminder would keep his uh, enthusiasm in check. And he was always uh, uh, kind of uh, having some connection with uh, uh, the spiritual part of life. He would, uh, he knew the Bhagavad Gita from memory. In fact, even A.R. Krishna Shastri, they, they knew Bhag any verse you tell, they can continue reciting the Gita from there. They were so familiar with the Bhagavad Gita. And every day they were doing a little bit of Parayana of the Gita. And he would um, constantly remind himself about the uh, transcendental nature of the uh, universe. And in, uh, in the end, DVG writes a very beautiful section called Sat Kavya and Adhyatma and talks about how the in the Nagarkatte we have the two snakes coiled uh, around each other. So almost like this, the twin snakes of uh, in uh, 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 Venkanaya's life were Sat Kavya, good literature, and uh, Adhyatma, philosophy. And all the time he had uh, this awareness. And he they, there's a poem that he used to recite every day where uh, he says, I know the origin of attachments. I know that they are ephemeral like water bubbles. Who in the world doesn't know it will destroy the wisdom that discerns reality from illusion, good from bad. And yet it will bring me joy if I spend my youth devotedly serving my elders. This is the import of the poem, which is uh, uh, Anantanarana Shastri's translation from the Nagananda. The, when uh, DVG was, I think, in his late 30s, his uh, wife uh, suddenly passed away, uh, Bhagiratama. And um, in his mid-30s, he was very young. And at that time, uh, DVG says, uh, people who went on behalf of me to the uh, uh, crematorium were uh, Rama Shastri, who is a, f a friend of his father, uh, and who is also their uh, Purohita, Bellave Venkatnaranapa, Venkatnaya and Angadi Krishnapa. None of the relatives were able to join at that time. And these people went and they performed everything. Uh, and by the time they came back, it was past midnight. And uh, Rama Shastri, uh, he, he was a f uh, family Purohita. And he had seen this uh, girl from the day she was born. And he performed all the samskaras. And he lamented that even the Antiyashti I had to perform for her. It is such a ghastly thing when we think about it. And um, after some time uh, when uh, um, he, DVG met Venkarnaya, he asked him a question in a very uh, oblique manner, not directly. Basically, his import was whether he should remarry or not. But the way he asks, should we turn our heart into a crematorium and burn the roots of attachments and aversions? Or should we uproot all the remnants of the destroyed and the defiled and plant new slap saplings there? Virakti complete detachment, or sarasate, joyful participation. What is the right way? And Venkanaya remained silent for some time. He says, let us discuss about this later. And in a matter of weeks, Venkanaya has to go through the same ordeal of losing his wife at a very young age. And then, after a few weeks, uh, uh, Venkanaya asks DVG the exact same question. And by this time, DVG says, I had arrived at a conclusion in my mind. So the time had passed and DVG had found the answers. He says each one should find the answer within himself as applicable to that person. Each person's deha dharma, psychological, physiological nature, deha dharma is unique. The body requirements of each person is unique. It is the same with mano dharma, the mental state, the family circumstances the duties and the responsibilities, they are all unique. So in this matter, one cannot decide for another. And of course, it, uh, uh, Venkatnaya got married again and that's when he had uh, a few children. And uh, also he died very young, uh, in 1939. He was hardly uh, 55, not even 55, when uh, Venkatnaya passed away. And there is a certain balance in Venkarnaya between the ancient traditions and the critical thinking. Almost what uh, Professor M. Hiriyana calls as critical conservatism that we see in uh, Venkarnaya as uh, shown by D.V. Gundappa. He had faith at the same time he also had a critical analysis. 
to highlight this nature of uh, venkannaya dvg compares him with two extremes of the spectrum one was bm shrikantayya who was very modern and uh, uh, kind of liberal and although he was not um, uh, he had not rejected traditional practices he had a certain coldness towards a uh, tradition certain um, uh, he maintained a certain distance from these traditional practices on the other end of the spectrum was professor a r krishna shastri who grew up in a very traditional household and who had much more um, uh, you know adherence to the uh, the ritualistic uh, part of uh, life so on the one hand you have bm shri who is willing to let go of some of the traditional practices and you had krishna shastri who is sticking on to even the letter and not just the spirit and in the midst of these two extremes we see venkannaya as a golden mean as shown by uh, uh, dvg so almost this uh, reconciliation between ancient and modern we see in ts venkannaya and uh, when we talk about venkannaya we have to talk about krishna shastri so almost they are uh, the literary brothers of uh, kannada uh, 20th century kannada world and when uh, dvg starts off talking about ark he says uh, when i try to speak about krishna shastri i wonder was krishna shastri what was he primarily was he a scholar was he a rasika was he a, uh, a loving family man was he an efficient worker the truth is all of this and more and uh, the uh, kind of attachment krishna shastri had for kannada uh comes through in this uh, essay he says there are lot of people who will work for sanskrit the english the german the french the americans all of these people are working for sanskrit but kannada lacks such nourishments and this is a lament that even today people like ganesh sir have that there is so much of support available for sanskrit there is not so much available for kannada and uh, even uh, you know panjay mangesh rao he says when i die i should be saying krishna krishna and i should be saying kannada kannada this is what uh, is my last breath similarly when rajaratnam uh, gave a lecture here in the gokhale institute dvg has tears in his eyes he says why don't you preserve this great treasure we have so in the life of krishna shastri all through we see this love for kannada and uh, the work that he has done for uh, kannada language and just like uh, our bella venkatanan appa here is another person who was very uh, harsh and strong on the outside but very soft and uh, friendly inside so uh, 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 almost like uh, very similar personalities but they did not have a great uh, friendship between the two there was always uh, uh, some sort of uh, d- differences of uh, opinion whereas venkannaya and krishna shastri or their uh, stark opposites but they became very close to each other in this uh, episode on krishna shastri there is a section on uh, uh, his first job and this is a very lamentable uh, story which uh, we read in uh, this uh, work the very first job that uh, krishna shastri had in the college in the mysore um, uh, college he was almost uh, in the early stages of his career he was transferred to the oriental library of mysore and uh, probably he did not have Uh, uh this much of bitterness against anything in his life as he had for this job in the oriental library so he had uh, and the and a person of krishna shastri's caliber he was not doing some literary work he was not editing a critical text of uh, uh, some uh, great treatise he was not even engaging with scholars he was far away from all scholarly activities he was assigned what was called dispatch duties it was basically a clerical job which he had to pack the books he had to weigh the books he had to calculate all the postal expenses he had to answer all the questions raised by the customers he had to keep track of the glue and the twine and the paper that was used and uh, half the time his hands would be in the in a pot of glue so this is the kind of uh, work that he was doing and the uh, head of the oriental library at that time was maha mahopadhyaya r shama shastri even his hands were tied but this sometimes happens in the government and large organizations where they use silken cloth for packing charcoal in the words of dvg this uh, is a lamentable thing uh, because in a large establishment unless there is a visionary leader 
they don't have the uh, purusha saragdantva what uh, some of the individuals have the kind of uh, uh, encouragement that a individual like masti venkatesh aingar gave for so many literators in karnataka uh, uh, history no great organization has given this kind of support because he was an individual he could assess the uh, quality and the caliber of upcoming uh, writers he would personally support so many people but no great university or government body has given this kind of discerning support to people professor m hiriyanna used to fund so many uh, students silently so this kind of support individuals have done again we go back to what dvg writes in the opening uh, uh, introduction of this uh, third volume that individual sattva far outshines these uh, great uh, universities and uh, institutions the best thing that institutions can do is to nourish the work that such scholars have done and take it to the people they may not be able to produce a great work of literature at least they can propagate a great work of literature again in the karnataka sangha he took the responsibility of running the magazine and prabuddha karnataka ran for many years simply because of krishna shastri's work and uh, efforts and uh, venkatnaya would come and give ideas and motivate and all this thing but he would not write a single word and uh, uh, although he was a very close friend of uh, uh, krishna krishna shastri he would uh, somehow avoid writing and uh, krishna shastri had got so irritated he used to uh, uh, compare venkatnaya to vishnu but in this case the four arms of uh, uh, like four arms of vishnu the four arms of venkatnaya was avishaya irrelevance anabhyasa lack of practice buddhimandya a dullness of intellect and um, um, anya anya kartavya bhava a being busy with all other engagements except writing an article for prabuddha karnataka and uh, whenever he used to be uh, pushed by krishna shastri he will always give some excuse you are a scholar i have lost the habit of writing and uh, when somebody comes he says okay don't write at least review some work he says you know you should have great knowledge to review this i have to read the dasharupaka i have to read all the sahitya darpana in great detail and sometime when people uh, used to ab- approach him to correct it he'll say illi vottakshara solpa correct agilla is it taana idu tena ad correct i am not able to make out and he would give such absolutely relevant uh, feedback to this person and uh, which is uh, second time that person will not go to venkatnaya but the uh, other contribution that venkatnaya did was great but krishna shastri was the person who would bring it to um, fruition and uh, one of the students who were both uh, studied under krishna shastri and uh, venkatnaya vembar uh, venkatacharya he said a single mind to think two bodies to act this up- applies to uh, uh, venkatnaya and um, um, uh, krishna shastri but i think it's the other way around two minds to think and one body to act was krishna shastri was the one who was acting and uh, finally we, in the last uh, he talks about mr shrinivasa murthy uh, although again he has spoken about him in the first volume he has few more details here the two personalities who are featured in these eight volumes who are younger than dvg were ar krishna shastri and mr shrinivasa murthy otherwise everybody else are older than dvg and these two people also made it to the uh, 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 books probably because they had died uh, early uh, especially mr shrinivas murthy died uh, young um, because dvg knew so many people like i said there was no dearth to his uh, you know contacts he had to have some framework to start writing these memoirs so my uh, uh, guess is that he started writing about people who were born before him so that it would cover a kind of gratitude and respect that he had for the previous generation maybe if he had lived for few more years he might have written some more volumes we don't know um and mr shrinivasa murthy as we have seen earlier he was a great rasika and he used to dress very well um, a lot of uh, interest in uh, multitude of things and uh, his daily routine was something that uh, we can all learn from Uh, he uh, would wake up in the morning he would himself prepare some oppitu some coffee and so on and after he finished uh, uh, you know eating and distributing to his friends and whatever he would sit down and write little bit of a story or a play or a poem whatever he would have been while he is cooking he would have thought about something he will bring it he will make a note of that in the afternoon he will have lunch then he will join some discussion and banter and uh, leisurely he will eat then little bit few pages after lunch he would write on grammar or prosody or some shastra 
and in the evening he would go and give a lecture on veera shaiva literature on the shiva sharanas and in the night he would compose a song or a poem and so on so like this is a part of the daily activities writing a story or a play writing some serious uh, you know uh, work on a shastra and writing a poem or a song and giving a lecture and educating all this thing were almost effortlessly he was uh, he had uh, done and uh, he had a uh, great scholarship in veera shaiva literature and a uh, lot of people from the lingayata mathas used to invite him and had great reverence for him it is a strange coincidence that two pioneers of veera shaiva literature ra narsimacharya and m r shrinivas murthy were both uh, vaishnavas Uh, so this way if you think about the um, uh, contribution done by different people it has nothing to do with what they were born uh, which family they were born in because even many of the european scholars have contributed for kannada literature as we saw earlier in this volume and uh, finally uh, the way in which uh, shrinivas murthy died was by cholera and uh, he says the uh, the manner in which he died brings dishonor and disgrace to our country system of public hygiene and uh, when he came to know about uh, mr shri's death he says for people like me the desire to live shrunk by half that is the sort of uh, attachment uh, that uh, dvg had for uh, mr shri in fact there was a movie made on one of the ka- kadambaris of mr shri mahatyaga and in that uh, i think 1972 or 73 there is a short clipping of dvg speaking about uh, mr shrinivas murthy one of the rare instances of dvg being recorded on uh, film the other one being uh, the famous documentary that was made and his interview with uh, gp rajaratnam and in the uh, short epilogue that dvg writes he says there are plenty more fish in the sea which is a english proverb and uh, there are always more people to write about there are so many people uh, he knew he has not written about masti he has not written about karant bendre kuemp all these people he knew very well uh, and like i said he probably had this kind of yardstick that he would first write about people who were born before him and um, in the epilogue he says uh, even so even though these people all these people have uh, done amazing work in the parishad i have a complaint i have a lament when whenever i get doubts of usages in kannada whom do i go to is there there is a is there a nanjun shastri here is there a krishna shastri whom should i consult now i am lost so like this sometimes it is natural when the older generation of scholars uh, pass away the people who are still living do have these doubts but i think it is more of an emotional uh, uh, thing than reality because always there are some people now today we are fortunate we have people like ganesh we have uh, people like srr we have uh, um, um, so many scholars who can guide us when uh, ganesh sir was growing up he had the chance to meet people like k krishna murthy rangana sharma today they are not there but newer generation of scholars are there so i think in some sense although that particular individual is uh, no longer with us and it's a great loss for uh, the world, world this the scholarship continues in different ways even today there are people who read uh, uh, so many subjects in a detailed way so i think it is more of an emotional thing but for him it is that experience is true that yes where do i go to such great people are no longer there with us and one of the common features that he has seen in all these characters he lists out um and uh, it's a uh, it's a very uh, very typical of dvg to make these uh, you know five points um fear of transgression humility honoring erudition and the erudite bhaya vinaya this is the one thing which is common paramarthikata the spiritual leaning looking beyond the material swalpa labha santushti being satisfied with very little simple living focusing on higher and better things adhyavasaya that is resoluteness hard work completing the tasks at hand being dedicated uh, for a certain cause and he says pramana bhutavada iyatte antastu authoritative standards keeping the best as the ideal looking for the best in class not everybody can become a great writer great scholar but if we always have the ideal in front of us we can try to push ourselves and go beyond whereas if we are very satisfied with our own level water finds its own level so we are very happy with where we are there is no chance of going up so this looking for looking for the best which is why again going through these treatises getting in touch with dvg's mind is one way for all of us to elevate ourselves 
and unless this kind of uh, ideal is in front of us and if unless we work uh, for it it is not possible to reach the great heights that these uh, scholars had reached with this i come to the end of the third volume uh, tomorrow and day after i'll try to speak about the divans of mysore and uh, cover uh, volume 4 and then there will be another series later probably in august where i'll uh, continue this uh, series of lectures thank you so much for a patient hearing